cold email tips. Hi, I'm Brian Pombo. Welcome back to Brian J. Pombo Live. Today, we're going to be talking about cold email and some ways that you can think about it a little bit differently and see if you can get some business off of it. So, we do these videos on a daily basis, so you can check out more of them over at brianjpombo.com. And Right now, we're running a special for the Amazon Proof Strategy Session. If you'd like to get your hands on that, go to brianjpombo.com slash Amazon to go check it out. It's all about overcoming competition. So if you've got competition issues in your area, whether it's just overwhelming, where you got large competitors like amazon.com, we're gonna show you how you can actually Amazon proof your business in a custom manner based solely off of your specific situation. Go check out brianjpombo.com slash Amazon. That link is in the description. Now, let's talk about cold email. It's a common trend nowadays and a lot of people are talking about cold emails. What's a cold email? A cold email is an email that comes out of the blue and shows up in your email box and you're like, well, isn't that spam, Brian? Well, yeah, it is spam if uh, it matches the idea of spam. So, and really, I mean, let's look at the legalities of it. If you are just sending an email where you are trying to sell something, for the first time to someone you've never met before and that person does not have a public available email meaning they're not in business or you're not in the political realm so politics is one of the things that's exempt always from any of these do not call or spam situations politics uh, politicians always leave a loophole for themselves to get through so that that's available but if you're running a business You've got a public facing email. That is something that anybody can use at any time. Um, things like that, that. There's a lot of openings in there for people to reach out to each other even though they have no prior engagement before. So if you're doing any type of B2B, business to business, where your clients or possible clientele could be businesses, then cold email can be very useful for you. If not, there are other ways that you can be that you can get into somebody's email box where you haven't been there before. And there's reasons why you'd want to be able to do that. And there's a lot of bad ways to do all of that that can make everything worse for you than otherwise. So these are all things that you have to take into account before you get started. So I'm going to put that disclaimer right on the front is that you want to look into all of the laws having to do with this and make sure that your idea for how to get in front of somebody has a reason, okay, and and can can be backed up legally, okay. So let's just put that out aside. But let's say it's legal. Now, and let's say it's moral. Let's say you're not just trying to get a quick buck, but you're you're actually trying to help people with your products and services. Okay, let's Let's set those aside. Let's, let's keep that in mind that that, that is going to be a given with what we're talking about here. Okay. If that's the case, then you got to step back and you got to say, okay, why am I looking at doing cold email to begin with? And that's where you got to, you got to look at what you want out of it. What are you looking to get? What in the long, what in the short run and in the long run are you hoping to get from cold email and you can't just look at it just as okay I do this I get paid <laughs> you know if you're looking at the short run you're you're gonna have a short run in the cold email space but if you're looking in the long run as a way to start a relationship with somebody as a way to start a conversation with somebody as a way to see what possible leads there are that it can eventually lead to business these are all legitimate reasons for going into email. I'm going to give you two books that um, that were uh, helpful to me when I was first looking into cold email. This one's called Hack Email. Okay, this is by Danny Flood. This is a this is a, a pretty decent book. He talks about a whole bunch of different ways of basically starting the relationship via email. It's a very simple book. It goes through a whole bunch of different examples. Hack Email. Go check this one out. This is a nice, good, simple read. Another good one. Grow Your Business with Cold Emails. This was a really good one. Um, and this one, I think I had even more things. It, a lot of, both of these books have a lot of great, um, uh, 
uh, links and so forth in them. Obviously, you can't if you, if you don't have the electronic version, you're not going to be able to click right on a paper book. And some of these links are not up to date because some of these books came out earlier, but they can get you started. They can start you in the process of going one way or the other if you're wanting to look up more details on this. Um, that this is a great point he makes. One of the areas that I, hi I highlighted, uh, the money is almost never in the first email. So you have to think about relationship building instead. And that is really the key to cold email in general. You have to see it as a first step in building a relationship with the person that you're trying to meet up with. You have to look at it that way. So one of the things that, uh, when I first started doing cold email, one of the things we did is we, we sent out a cold email initially. And then we'd send out a couple others saying, you know, with a little regarding, say, hey, did you happen to see this? Did, did you see this again? And just, because you never know when you're gonna miss somebody, people get inundated with so many emails. So you've gotta, you gotta kinda make a point. Don't just send an email and expect a whole lot of response. And don't just send out a whole bunch to a whole bunch of people without really being direct. And the more personalized you can make each email, the better, because then it just doesn't look like this big old flood of emails that you sent out all at once to everybody. If you can use their name, if you can use their business name, and if you can say something about why you're reaching out to them, that's gonna be huge. The next thing is follow up with a phone call. Marrying two different media sources together is extremely helpful. So they'll read it, okay, they'll see it, or they'll just see it real briefly on the way through. They see a couple emails go through, okay, so and so is trying to get all, well, whoever that is. And then you leave a message on their phone and say, hey, see, it's a perfect reason to get a message because now it's not a cold call. See, you think it's a cold call, but you already had a cold email. It's a warm call. And you've got a reason for calling and it's, hey, the reason why I'm calling is I sent you an email on Tuesday. I just wanted to see if you got it and see what you thought about it. All of a sudden, now you have a reason for a conversation. Now the reason for the conversation is the thing that you introduced earlier, but it starts things off and it actually works. As long as you have a place that you're taking them, a question that you're asking them, some type of survey that you're running, or a reason for going forward. Now, the next thing that, that I found really was helpful is if I had a really strong reason for getting together with them, if I had something that they were interested in, not something that I was selling necessarily, but something that they would want. So one of the things that led to is doing podcasting, because then I could lead with, a, with an email, I could follow up with a phone call, but the question was, we're looking to see if you'd like to be a guest on our podcast. That changes everything because it's something meaningful to the person. It's not, it's, there's no type of direct sale involved whatsoever. It's the beginning of a relationship. If you can look at all the, your one-on-one -on -one sales or lead generation as the beginning of a relationship versus this big massive thing that you're gonna spread out and hope that someone's gonna just start sending you money, I think you're gonna have a whole lot more luck in these two areas, both cold email and I snuck in cold calling. So calling on the phone, using phone calls as a way to get in touch with people. Also with a whole lot of laws associated with it. So you gotta be very careful. I work a lot in the business to business field, so that opens things up quite a bit. But you gotta watch, so you got do not call lists when it comes to when it comes to phone calls and you've got spam laws when it comes to emails. These are all things you gotta pay attention to uh, regardless of where you are. Just make sure you know what the, what the rules are before you play the game. Hey, hopefully those are some interesting ideas, something to start you going with your, uh, with your tactics when it comes to email. I'd love to hear some questions, leave some comments. We're, we'll be back here tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and let the magic happen.